हॅलो स्टुडंट वेलकम टू द कोर्स ऑन बायोफार्मास्युटिकल्स आय एम ऋतुपर्ण करकरे फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ बायोटेक्नॉलॉजी इंजिनिअरिंग के आय टीज कॉलेज ऑफ इंजिनिअरिंग कोल्हापूर वी आर करंटली लर्निंग युनिट नंबर वन लेट अस कमेन्स विथ द लेसन नंबर फोर दॅट इज ड्रग डिस्कवरी वी आर गोईंग टू सी द डेव्हलपमेंट लाईफ ऑफ अ ड्रग कॅन्डिडेट सो वेन एव्हर अ न्यू ड्रग इज टू बी रिसर्च इट हॅज गॉट फ्रॉम इट्स डिस्कवरी टू इट्स सेल टू द मार्केट दीज मेनी स्टेप्स इन द सायकल फर्स्ट स्टेप इज ड्रग डिस्कवरी द सेकंड वन इज इनिशियल कॅरेक्टराइजेशन ऑफ द मोलिक्युल आफ्टर द इनिशियल कॅरेक्टराइजेशन इज डन द ड्रग विल बी टेस्टेड इन प्री क्लिनिकल ट्रायल्स दॅट इज ऑन अॅनिमल्स इफ द रेग्युलेटरी अथॉरिटी अप्रूव्ह द ट्रायल्स ऑफ द अॅनिमल्स अँड द रिझल्ट ऑफ इट दॅन इट विल सॉट द अप्रुवल टू द क्लिनिकल ट्रायल्स ऑन ह्युमन्स द क्लिनिकल ट्रायल्स इन ह्युमन्स आर ऑफ फोर फेजेस द फर्स्ट थ्री फेजेस अँड द रिझल्ट देअर ऑफ आर प्रेझेंटेड to the authorities and if they approve the manufacturing and marketing license to the given drug then finally drug goes to the cell and post selling of the drug also there is a clinical phase 4 where the post marketing surveillance is to be followed this entire development life cycle of a drug may take from its discovery to the market the around period of 10 to 15 years or more than that now let us understand the first step in this particular process which is called as drug discovery so drug discovery is nothing but to discover a molecule which will act as active principle on a certain disease or disorder the old approach of drug discovery was of these steps people used to have the prior knowledge from the ayurvedic preparations or traditional medicine knowledge so if we know that a particular extract from a plant acts or heals a certain disease or disorder then this approach could be called as the ethnobotanical approach once it is known by people then there were developments in the disease or disorder mechanism understanding due to the developments of cell biology physiology and anatomy studies so later on in the old approach there was also the purification technology developments where from these natural ex- extracts people used to purify the drug molecules or the active principles and those principles are used to heal the pathological condition that is disease or disorder and finally once all it is done then the same active principle can be structurally characterized and the same lead compound or the active principle can be organically synthesized as a drug in the pharmaceutical laboratories so this was the old approach of drug discovery now let us consider one case study of the same let's say we have one cancerous case where a prior knowledge is like this the vinca alkaloids extracted from catharensis roseus plant have or they show the anti tumor or anti cancer activity now as the cancer mechanism understanding developed in the previous era and there was also the development in purification and separation technology people started isolating and extracting and purifying vinca alkaloids from this particular plant extracts as active principles or lead compounds and once the structural characterization of these vinca alkaloids was done then finally the same products were synthesized by organic reactions in the laboratory so this was the overall approach in the old drug discovery methodologies but currently we are in the era where we make use of a modern approach called as rational drug design approach for the drug discovery so let us consider one case study of a small molecular drug discovery which is against the cancer so to understand this drug discovery methodology we first need to understand the problem statement so let us consider that there is a cancerous case where we need to have a treatment on the cancer 
Now, to treat the cancer means to kill the cancerous tissue that is tumor. Now, for that we should know firstly the characteristic of cancerous cells. Why at all they grow the tumor? So, cancerous cells are escaping their normal cell cycle and they have indefinite capacity to grow by drawing the major nutrients which are meant for the normal cells around the cancerous tissue. The same thing means they do not follow the contact inhibition property of the cells. So, now the question comes how to kill this cancerous tissue or cancerous cells. So, we can kill them means we need to stop their proliferation so that tumor will not grow. So, we can stop the proliferation by halting the DNA synthesis because if we do not let the DNA to divide then finally the cells also will not divide as per the cell cycle. So, to halt the DNA synthesis we can do it by seizing the synthesis of the DNA precursors. DNA being a polymer the purine or pyrimidines can be stopped synthesized so that finally the DNA synthesis will halt. So, this is a problem background. Now, let us consider how then solution may be developed. So, we know that the purine synthesis is by two pathways as per the biochemistry knowledge. It is either by de novo pathway or by salvage pathways. Now, salvage is a escaping pathway where if de novo is not working, cell will have the alternative pathway like a salvage pathway. Now, if we want the DNA synthesis to be blocked, then we need to block both the pathways. Now, in the primary treatment therapy on cancer, the de novo pathway can be blocked by some chemical molecules like methotrexate, but still cell will go with the alternative salvage mechanism for the purine synthesis. So, we need to again block the salvage pathway as well. Now, how to block the salvage pathway? So, salvage pathway is involving one important enzyme that is called as purine nucleoside phosphorylase. This enzyme catalyzes the reaction as shown in this figure which produces free purine. Now, we need to block this reaction. How to block the reaction? We can do it by blocking the enzyme active site because in the enzymes active site or binding pocket this reaction will happen which will produce the free purine. Now, how to block the enzyme active site? So, if we have some blocker agent or one inhibitor at the active site binding then we can go ahead with the active site inhibition so that the real substrate of the enzyme will not bind there. So, the solution on this is the structural feature characteristic identifications. So, we can see here in this diagram the active site of that PNP enzyme is shown. So, if we block the active site as shown here, we can make the reaction to stop. So, for this blocking we need to know what type of structures are useful. So, they are generally the purine analogs. So, we can have a library of similar structures which can block the active site here. They will be all purine analogs. So, range of similar structures is created by the group of scientists and finally, out of them the potent inhibitors, the potent structures which can permanently inhibit the enzyme are screened from the library. So, this is the overall approach of rational drug design where we need to identify the molecule active principles and we need to screen them. So, this process is called as drug library creation and drug process lead optimization and lead identification. So, here is a reflection spot for you. If it is ok with us that if we have a library of 20, 30 drugs, we can easily make out the screening. But if we have more than 1000 analog structures, what can be done in this case? So, think for a while on the same. So, the answer to this particular problem is high throughput drug screening. 
so in the modern technological ventures we have got one technology called as high throughput screening so this particular figure referred from this research article shows you the overall approach of modern high throughput drug screening so we can see here from the bioinformatics tool approaches we can have the molecular docking where we can make out how the pnp kind of enzymes can be blocked with the required substances so we can do the molecular docking of the enzymes and all the different purine analog drugs then after that once we screen them we can go ahead with in vitro studies and the assay developments and finally we can bring that to the hts that is high throughput screening from the other part of this side we also have the different type of drugs already created or the drug library created so we can screen the library by virtual screening because we have got many in silico tools nowadays available and then finally once it is done then the leads or the active principal leads which are identified will be tested for drug like properties if they show the drug like properties then we call them as the leads from those libraries and finally those will go for clinical trials if the clinical trials fail or the the drug library doesn't have the drug like properties so those kind of molecules will go again back to screening of the library coming to clinical trial success then it will go for the fda approval so here the very fast quick technologies like high throughput drug screening where the multivale plates are used for all these assay developments or the drug target binding assays which is very useful nowadays in the modern technology in addition to the high throughput screening technology which is a modern day technology for vast library screening of the drugs the current drug discovery era also uses many different modern approaches as we know in the current era of 2020 20 we have got a much or better understanding of biochemistry cell biology and molecular biology because of many different scientific breakthroughs were there in the decades of 1980 to 2000 we have got modern omics technologies currently in place which are called as genomics proteomics and metabolomics where whole genome sequencing genotypic phenotypic relationships are studied at very great depths we also have animal models for the different diseases which were not available previously and in addition to this the very very important in silico studies of drug molecules which is called as computer aided drug design where we can do all sort of library creation structural design drug target binding studies and the prediction of results in dry lab without the vast experimentation in the wet laboratory so in silico tools have added a lot to current scientists so all these are the modern approaches of drug discovery so considering this entire modern approach if we compare the modern versus old technology for the comparative timeline of a development of a drug then in the traditional approach which is a very long process let's say if we have more than 1000 drug candidates in the drug library then we need to experiment test of all the 1000 candidates for potential identification and then finally we'll have the best of 1000 drugs but it will take a very long time so modern approach of computer aided drug design fasten the process so that we can do the drug library creation in silico and by identifying the drug and target fit by some energy studies we can easily save the time and only we need to manufacture and test the potent candidates so that let's say from 1000 of the drugs only 300 or less than 200 drugs are like the lead compounds which can be tested and finally the very potent one out of this final 1000 can be finalized so this is a comparative of 
traditional versus modern approach and how the modern drug design and the development approach has helped us to save the time of the entire drug life cycle. So here we end our lesson number 4. Thank you.